The CV-90 is a highly versatile Swedish infantry fighting vehicle designed to tackle the harsh Scandinavian landscape. It has spawned a family of IFVs, the most recent of which has been used to help Ukrainian efforts in defending their country. For almost 30 years now, it's been the jewel in Sweden's military crown, and there's no sign of this IFV going anywhere soon. In fact, it's likely we'll see the next iteration of the vehicle in the next few years. Let's take a look at this Swedish fighting machine. During the Cold War in the early 80s, the Swedish Army needed vehicles with high mobility, air defense, anti-tank capability, high survivability, and protection. In 1985, the Stridsfurden 90 was a project group that was made up of representatives from the Swedish Armed Forces, the Swedish Defense Administration, or FMV, and Swedish contractors that included Haglunds and Bofors. These contractors would be behind the CV-90 build and future iterations. Haglunds would become part of BAE Systems. In the project group's search for an IFV, they finalized the design for a new vehicle that came from an Air Force concept. A year later, the prototypes were ordered. Five prototypes were constructed and were delivered in 1988. These were then tested extensively between 1988 and 1991. At this time, further prototypes for specialized variants were ordered. The first deliveries to enter service started in 1994. Since then, the original CV-90 has gone through many iterations, and the core of the vehicle is often customized to meet the needs of specific missions. Let's look at the latest iteration that's currently in service, the CV-90 Mark IV. The Mark IV came from a research and development program performed by BAE Systems to use feedback from the seven countries that use the CV-90. This iteration has many new improvements on its predecessor in terms of mobility, protection, and firepower. The newest vehicle was launched by BAE Systems during the International Armored Vehicles Conference and Exhibition in September 2017. The design of the CV-90 Mark IV is very similar to the original model, with the driver seated in the front left, the power pack to his right, the turret in the center, and the troops location at the rear of the hull ready for deployment. The construction is of all welded steel armor. This basic armor can stop attacks against 14.5 mm armor-piercing rounds. The armor protection over the frontal arc is classified, but all models from CV-90 and later are said to be protected against 30mm armor-piercing fin-stabilized discarding Sabbat ammo. This CV-90 has a crew of three. This includes the driver, commander, and gunner. The rear part of the hull, which is home to troops being delivered, can accommodate up to eight infantrymen. These are seated with four on each side facing each other with an anti-blast seat for each soldier. These troops enter and leave with a large hydraulic ramp in the rear of the hull. For further protection, the Mark IV can be equipped with an active protection system. The state-of-the-art sensor suite of this APS provides a long-range, real-time, 360-degree panoramic view of the vehicle's vicinity, which gives the vehicle the capability to react and counterattack quickly. Threats are detected thanks to the use of an active, electronically scanned array radar sensor developed by Rada Electronic Industries and a passive infrared detector developed by Elbitz Elisra, if required. When a target is close, an explosive projectile interceptor is launched towards it. The interceptor explodes very closely to this threat, destroying or deflecting and destabilizing it without detonating its warhead. This interceptor is a mortar shell-like projectile with a combustible blast warhead that sends a shockwave upon detonation, enough to neutralize the incoming aggressor. In this version of the CV-90, modern protection systems of the vehicle also include a jammer system to stop infrared missiles and laser detector devices. To power the 37-ton tank, the CV has an impressive engine. It's an improvement on previous designs with the Mark IV capable of up to 1,000 horsepower from its engine and the latest upgraded X300 heavy-duty transmission. The torsion bar suspension of the vehicle has seven dual rubber-tired road wheels on each side, a drive sprocket at the front, and an idler at the rear with no track return rollers. A track tension adjusting system is fitted as standard on the CV90, which lets the driver adjust both tracks at once without the need to move. If needed, the IFV can be equipped with SUSE-type rubber band tracks. 
These are lighter and quieter while also providing greater range, reducing vibrations, and increasing protection against fire and mine blasts. In terms of weaponry, the Mark IV can be fitted with a two-man turret or an unmanned weapon station. The power-operated turret is of all-welded steel construction and designed for two men with the commander seated on the left and the gunner on the right. Turret traverse and weapon elevation are all electric with manual controls available in the event of an emergency. The D-Series modular turret with the vehicle is highly versatile and can be switched out with different types of armament, from 30 to 40 mm and 35 to 50 mm automatic cannons up to a 120 mm smoothbore tank cannon. The secondary weaponry can include Spike LR or other anti-tank guided missile launchers, as well as a 7.62 mm coaxial machine gun. This gun is mounted to an independent pod located on the turret's left side. This weapon pod can also be armed with 40 mm automatic grenade launcher, 7.62 mm machine gun, or a laser weapon depending on the needs of the mission. The right side of the turret features two anti-tank missile launchers stored under armor and raised from inside of the turret to fire. This storage box can be replaced to host UAV or other spy or reconnaissance devices. There are also eight smoke grenade dischargers mounted under armor on each side at the front of the turret. Standard equipment of the vehicle includes a nuclear, biological, and chemical filtration system with a chemical detector and radiation detector systems. For stealth, it can also use heat-absorbing filters to provide temporary protection against thermal imaging, image intensifiers, and infrared cameras. The commander can use an independent sighting system mounted on the roof of the turret. This is a day camera, a thermal camera, and a laser rangefinder, which lets the user find targets and confirm threats to the gunner, who can take them out with a cannon or anti-tank missiles. The CV-90 is currently in service with Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Netherlands, Norway, and Switzerland, all using the IFV. By 2020, there were 16 different versions of the CV-90, all modified to deliver various roles. Over 1,000 vehicles have been built to date, and in 2023, it was announced that Sweden would contribute 50 of the vehicles to Ukraine. However, it wasn't known which version was being sent. Now the Swedish Army is looking to improve the CV-90 once more for the Mark V model. The work needed on this is estimated to take the next four years to complete. Although no agreement has been reached between the FMV and industry, there have been some development goals published. The first is for a hybrid electric propulsion system to be proposed and possibly integrated. Others include improvement of its heat, radar, and visual signature management, integration of beyond line of sight anti-tank guided missiles, and integration of unmanned aerial vehicles. These improvement variants are thought to extend the lifetime of the CV-90 in the Swedish Army beyond 2034. What do you think about the CV-90? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.